Hi, my name is Thalia MK and welcome to Internet 2.0 Conference Dubai 2024. And today I have with me who is also an honorary for receiving an award for outstanding leadership, Mr. Hassan Dawook, who is VP Sales EMEA at FTC Solar Inc. First of all, congratulations. Thank you Welcome. So much. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good, Tala. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Amazing. So he has been awarded for an outstanding leadership in, 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 on an uh, in Internet 2.0 conference. So before we go ahead and get to know him more, we would like to also know about your organization and then we can get back to it. Sure. So um, I am working currently at a company called FTC Solar. Uh, it's a global company that is headquartered in the U.S. in Austin, Texas, uh, but also present in the rest of the world. What we do is uh, we provide uh, solar trackers, design and supply of solar trackers, which is an essential uh, equipment for all the utility scale projects around the world. Oh, that's amazing. So it kind of is the new way of living. Correct. I mean, yeah. it's it's been really picking up. Mm -hmm. uh, I started the career in solar, not specifically in this company, but mm -hmm. in solar around 13 years ago. Okay. So the amount of advancement in the sector has been amazing. I think people are becoming more uh, woke when it comes to having an efficient and good lifestyle. Do you think a drastic change in the uh, Middle East uh, is coming later in life or is it coming like is it similar to the other European side? Very good question. Actually, if you look at UAE where we are positioned right now, already the advancement has happened because of the great leadership here. So even uh, back then, like 10 years ago, when solar was not the cheapest source of electricity, yeah. this uh, leadership believed in the technology. And look at today. Today, solar is one of the, if not the cheapest source of electricity. Mm -hmm. So you see Middle East, uh, specifically in the Gulf area, Saudi Arabia, UAE, implementing one of the largest and cheapest uh, utility scale projects. So I see the Middle East, maybe one country is different than the other. I'm from Lebanon, for instance. Okay. We're still a bit behind. Yeah. But if you look at other countries we're, we're actually there okay. and I see it even more and more advancing. Do you think that uh, in the future of solar and living that way will is the new way of living is it gonna be drastically happening or it will be little slower than we expect? No, I think it will go even faster than we expect. Oh, okay. If you look at uh, uh, the geopolitical problems that we have here uh, uh, in the world, actually, mm -hmm. solar is one of the things that will give you independency, so you can use it for off-grid electricity. So there's a lot of reasons, uh, financial, commercial, sustainability, health, to use solar. So yeah. people will get more and more aware of that, uh, and they will uh, individually take the decision of having solar. So, no, I think it will drastically change, and uh, we're actually seeing it right now I feel that solar uh, as you just mentioned it I've uh, everybody wants to have a very healthy efficient lifestyle and people are getting very much woke so I think solar is the it thing so having said that I would also like to know that how and if anybody wants to work in your field because I believe solar works in all departments even if it's media if it's marketing it's home a normal home person would also be interested it's like a work anybody can get into and it will drastically change their life so if you want to give anybody an advice if they want to work in the same field what would that be very very good question and uh, I, I I really put myself in their shoes when I was 13 14 years ago I was a young graduate who really did not know a lot about solar back then solar was a bit mature but still I think the, my best advice for young graduates is really to believe in themselves age is just a number if you're really interested in uh, you know spreading uh, sustainability if you really care about the environment if you really want to shine in this industry just believe in yourself uh, a bit of uh, reading over the internet on the sector would give you the beginning steps to be part of any solar company and uh, really it's, it's a great industry if you see the amount of companies that did not start as solar they're moving to solar is great so this is one one advice I would give the other advice is no matter how much you get uh, uh, walked out of this because we're seeing some people that are saying you know still we need to go to fossil fuels it's easier it's cheaper don't don't believe that really believe in yourself continue working on solar and you'll have a great career and great path forward we, we having you learning, I'm me sitting next to you just uh, taught me so much in just a minute. So tell us how is your networking experience in Internet 2.0 conference has been so far? 
Uh, it's been great, actually. Uh, to be just recognized by, by Internet 2.0 was, for me, a, a blessed acknowledgement because uh, I think, you know, Internet 2.0 is uh, looking at several industries and fields, yes. you know. Uh, Internet is one of them. I am see here marketing, health. It's a really great uh, uh, networking uh, event for me, a great combination of a lot of uh, leaders uh, around, around different sectors. So, for me, even the first day here has been very successful. I met really great people, and I look forward for the, for the next two days. That's amazing. So uh, I, before we go ahead, I would also like to know there are like uh, when when it comes to achievement, there, tell us about two achievements that shaped your career, mm -hmm. as it is. Because of course everybody wants to have a very successful career. You're here, you're receiving an award. As well. it's like a milestone. So if any, what are the two achievements you would uh, like to mention? A really, really good question. I mean, for me, uh, just seeing uh, people getting positively affected by the by the solar uh, plants that we install is, is, is an achievement. But if I really want to squeeze my mind into two, uh, I would say uh, one of the first achievements that I really, you know, believed in myself was cracking the uh, Egyptian uh, renewable industry. You know, I was there, I was a bit younger than now, sitting in front of key leaders uh, from the sector there, and we really managed to, you know, start the solar industry there. So that was one of the achievements. And the second one is, uh, you know, during my career, I, I was working with a company called uh, Zero Mass Water, now it's called Source, where we installed solar panels that can produce drinking water just from air. So uh, I've installed that on orphanages, I've installed that in, in schools. So really looking at the children having access to clean water by a sustainable product was also an achievement for me. So, you know, when I combine these both, uh, I really reflect on what ha I have done. And I, you know, proud of, of course, myself, but also proud of the people that gave me this, uh, 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 you know, headwind to, to, to be part of these companies. And I would really like to mention specifically Ahmed Shatila, who was uh, the CEO of the first solar company. And he believed in me and he probably, uh, I mean, shaped my, my career in this industry. Wow, that's amazing. First, you said solar and you spoke about water. Whenever people talk about solar, they only believe in electricity. Yeah. They say, oh, solar means we are getting free electricity, we'll be getting more electric electricity, but it involves water and other features as well. So can you light up uh, on that banner? Definitely. I mean, I myself did not really know that, that we can yeah. put a solar panel, uh, I mean, they call it hydro panel, and then it, they produce drinking water. It's very simple. Whatever needs electricity, like, you know, now the major source of drinking water, for example, here is desalination. Yes. It needs electricity. Mm -hmm. So you use solar for it sometimes. But this, this particular machine, you put it, it absorbs ambient air, and it makes it drinking water. So wow. this is how solar is integrated into it. And that's why we call it solar hydro panels. So they are really contributing to drinking water. So you can use any, any, any uh, uh, source of electricity, but when you use it for solar, it becomes green. So anything that you need in terms of water, electricity, you can use solar for it. That's amazing. Thank you. You educated me in like two, three minutes. I <laughs> am you, honored Tana. I'm sitting next to you. My honor If is mine. Uh, anybody wants to collaborate with you or take your advice or just contact you, what are the email address or contact number? Yeah, so for any uh, professional contacts, I would uh, uh, advise you to send me an email to uh, hdao, it's H-D-A-O-U-K at ftcsolar.com. Or you can add me on LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Hassan Dao, so you can also find me on LinkedIn and you can get to me for any advice on your career or even I can learn from you. Of course, there's always ways we can learn uh, in this industry, but I would be happy to, to support anyone that comes to me. Thank you so Thank much. You, so we got to know solar doesn't work only for electricity. It uh, comes with water as well. I think two things I always stand by is avoid using plastic and save water. Water exactly. will be a luxury later. You have to please understand the value of both. And saving water, water is a necessity. Don't make it into a luxury. Thank you so much for educating Thank us. Thank you for coming into this field, for making our future brighter and hopefully, inshallah, really good. Thank you so much. And, uh, Thank you. and this is Talia MK signing off. This is Internet 2.0 Conference 2024.